All right, good evening and welcome to Chicago Students Dominate Math. My name is Mr. Hendricks and I am a school teacher at Providence St. Mel School. Today I'd like to uh, present to you a live call-in interactive show where we invite students to call in to CAN TV. Again, this is a live call-in show. You call in number 312-738-1060. And we do the best we can to assist the students out here, whatever the age, uh, and help them with their math homework. Or maybe they have, uh, at Providence St. Mel School, the school where I work, we have our exams this week. Maybe you have your exam. Maybe you have um, an upcoming test. Uh, I'd like to be the person you go to to call in uh, every Every day, 5.30, we go from 5.30 to 6, so the show isn't very long at all. So if you have a question, you got to call in right now. Um, the areas that I feel most comfortable working in are um, algebra, geometry, uh, maybe some uh, pre-calculus or calculus I can help you with. Not so much statistics, um, but... Um, a little statistics I might be able to help, but for the most part, anything in, um, uh, like I say, from algebra to, to calculus, I should be able to help you. But to help you, I've got, you've got to call in. The number again is 312-738-1060, and I'll do the very, very best that I can. If I can't help you, I'll let you know that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, what I'd like to do is I would like to talk about an area that causes students serious, um, they're, they're seriously challenged in this area. Uh, my algebra students just took a test where the, the topic that, even though I had gone through it and had, we practiced it, it's an area that causes students a lot of challenges. And that area is called the order of operations and we're going to talk about that in today's show, making sure that all the students out there are clear on what the order of operation is um, and how to apply it, what, what the order of operations is not, and we're going to talk about that. Um, and then later on towards the end of the show, we will um, just show you um, something that we're also introducing to our students at Providence St. Mel. Um, some of our advanced students were trying to introduce um, electrical circuits within within the class and not so much um, connecting that with math per se but we are um, just trying to expose them to as much as we can in hopes that um, you know they see it down the road in college and they're they're more familiar with it that said let's just jump into uh, today's topic which is order of operations but the way the show works is if you call in the number 312-738-1060, I'll just stop whatever I'm doing. I'll just stop and you're, you know, the students out here, you're, you're my priority. So we'll stop, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, all right, let's just jump into it. Order of operations. Um, typically what happens, typically what happens is uh, teachers teach students um, the order of operations um, in a way that it confuses, unfortunately, many of the students. Order of operations. Now, order of operations, um, order of operations. What, what students have been taught, what students have been taught when they're taught the order of operations is they're taught uh, please, uh, uh, please excuse the, the acronym, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Uh, that is an acronym that helps them the beginning of each of these words, the letters in the beginning of each of these words um, actually represent um, 
instructions as to how to solve or evaluate any math expression. The P represents any kind of parentheses or grouping symbol. Any kind of parenthesis, parentheses, or any kind of grouping symbol of any kind, that's what the P represents. And then after that, the E on excuse represents the exponents. Exponents. Okay. And then the M in my, that is, that represents uh, multiplication. Represents multiplication. And then the D, that represents division. That represents division. But multiplication division, you're to evaluate the multiplication division from left to right. Left to right. So this is very, very important. And this is where students, we'll put an asterisk here. This is where students all oftentimes fall short. And then A, that stands for addition addition, and then the S stands for subtraction. All right, and then the addition subtraction, that's the, we're, we're considering both those operations the same, we're going to go from left to right. We're going to evaluate addition and subtraction from left to right. All right, so as we evaluate any expression, we're going to follow a specific order I'll even number them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But the challenge, the challenge with this order of operations is this is not always the exact order. You don't always go from exponents to multiplication to division to addition subtraction. And this is where sometimes students fall short. Sometimes you'll do exponents and then sometimes because multiplication and division are really the same step, if division comes first, if division is to the left of multiplication, you would have to divide before you multiply. This idea, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, represents a general, very, 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 very general format. Sometimes you do multiplication division, sometimes you do division then multiplication, whatever you see in the problem as you look at the problem from the left to the right. Sometimes you do multiplication then division, but you'll do addition, then subtraction. But sometimes you do multiplication division, and if subtraction comes before addition, you would do subtraction then addition. All right? You'll always do these two functions before you do these two, but once you're within these two uh, operations, sometimes you'll do the division before the multiplication, sometimes you do the subtraction before the addition. So I'm doing a lot of talking. A lot of times uh, words are, are made clear with uh, problems. So let's practice. Let's practice what we're saying with a couple of problems. Let's start with an easier problem. Let's say we have 6 divided by 2 times 3 plus 4 minus 1. 6 divided by 2 times 3 plus 4 divided by 1. A lot of times you see on Facebook, on Twitter, you always see these kind of problems. They say, let's see how smart you are. And a lot of times people are right, and a lot of times people are wrong. All right, so let's show you what you need to do to be one of those who are right. All right, now let me show you. Let, let's intentionally be wrong. I'm going to intentionally write something wrong right now. All right, so um, right now, this is students dominate math. I want to be your math tutor, and I want you to call into the show right now, 312-738-1060. I'm doing my own thing until you call in. But if you call in, I'll stop what I'm doing and help you with it. Whatever math subject you need help in at your school. 
You need help on your homework right now, you call. You've got a test coming up, you call. Don't be afraid of anything. You just call in the number 312-738-1060. Right now we're talking about order of operations, but if you call in, we'll talk about whatever you want to talk about. All right, so like we were saying, we're going to intentionally be wrong to show you where students, um, the mistake that I don't want you to make, all right? So there are no parentheses, there are no exponents. You can skip those two steps. But students think that they always have to multiply before they divide. That is wrong. So what they do is they'll say 6 divided by 6, even though that division sign is to the left of the multiplication sign, they think that they always have to multiply because multiplication, in, in, in the order of the acronym that they learn, multiplication comes first. But again, this is a general form. It's a general form. But they think that you always multiply, so they, they, they say 2 times 3 is 6, then they bring down the plus 4, bring down the minus 1. And then they do their division because that's the order of the acronym. That's not the order of operations. 6 divided by 6 is 1. Again, this is all wrong. Plus 4 minus 1. Bring down the plus 4, bring down the minus 1. And now they would add 1 plus 4 is 5 minus the 1, and then you get 4. This is wrong, and it's the most common mistake that students make. I hope you're listening well. I hope you're listening well. Now, let's, let's write down the same problem. This is going to be correct. This is going to be correct. All right, so let's write down the same problem. 6 divide 2 times 3 plus 4. 4 minus 1. All right, so now the correct thing to do, the correct thing to do here would be, there are no parentheses, there are no exponents. All right, so now you either multiply or divide. You either multiply or divide. How do you decide which one to do? Well, you, you look at the problem from the left side to the right side. You look at the problem from the left side to the right side. Well, if you're looking at this problem from the left side to the right side, and you have to decide, are you going to divide or are you going to multiply? This problem, you would divide first because in the order, not the order of the acronym, but the order of operations, which says do either one of these from left to right, you would choose to divide. So you'd say 6 divided by 2, which is 3, times 3, bring down the plus 4 minus 1. I really, 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 really want to make this clear. You're not looking at the order of the acronym. Please, parentheses, excuse, uh, exponents, my, multiplication, dear, division. You're not looking, you, there's an, that's just the general form. That's just the general form to help you know to look at the parentheses, then the exponents, and then either one of these. Division, multiplication is no more important than division. Division is no more important than multiplication. You have to analyze the problem from the left to the right when you are on three and four, This is the multiplication division step. When you are on addition and, the addition and subtraction step, you have to look at um, you have to look at the problem from the left to the right. Whatever comes first, if addition comes before subtraction, you do that first. If subtraction comes before addition, you do that first. When you're on the addition subtraction step, I hope you're understanding what I'm saying, and I'm not getting too long-winded. So now we divide it. Now you're going to multiply because we're still. Looking at multiplication division, you get 9, bring down the plus 4, minus 1, and now you, you're on the addition and subtraction step. All right, so uh, addition doesn't always come 
before subtraction, but because addition, as, as you look at this problem from the left to the right, because you see addition first, you're going to do that. So you get 13 minus 1, and the answer is 12. So when you are on the Facebook, when you are on Facebook, you're going to see a lot of people with 4, and you're going to hopefully see the majority of people with 12, because 12 is the correct answer. I want phone calls. Man, I'd be so happy if I got some phone calls. 312-738-1060. I want to be your math teacher your math tutor for this evening, but we only have another 10 minutes in the show. Sometimes the problems take time. I want you to call in. I know somebody's out there watching. 312-738-1060 is the number that you call in. I promise you, you'll be happy you called in. I'll be, uh, uh, I promise you that you'll be happy you called in. Let's look at another problem. Let's look at another problem, uh, order of operations, and uh, we'll probably end with pro this problem unless you call in. All right, let's take a look at a problem. Let's just make it up. Uh, let's just make it up, see how we do. All right, so again, we have, uh, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's our general form. That's our general form, and let's look at a problem. Uh, let's say, uh, again, let's make it up. Let's say we have 4 minus 3 to the third. Let's make it 4 plus 3 to the third. Divided by, oh, let's say 9 times 6 plus 2 to the second power. All right, let's try that. Let's try that. All right, using the order of operations. All right, so the order of operations says attack any grouping symbol first. You attack the grouping symbol first. The beautiful thing about math is it's not about, well, in my opinion, we should do this. And in my opinion, we should do that. No, math is not that way. Um, true, true enough, there are techniques, there are valid techniques that might be able to work, uh, different kinds of techniques that might be able to work on the same problem, but it's not about an opinion. It's not about an opinion. It's about, um, in this case, a specific order in which you're to attack a problem. All right, so the order says do the grouping symbol first. This problem, we do have a grouping symbol. We did not have it before, but you get 6 plus 2 is 8. And that 8 is being raised to the second power. Notice how I did not go outside and even look at the 2. I focused on the order of operations, which says attack the grouping symbol first. So I bring everything else down, plus 4, 3 to the third, divide 9, times, no more need for the parentheses there, I've already done everything inside. Now I do exponents. I do exponents. I, I should evaluate the exponents. So you got exponents right here. So this is 3 to the third. Now what that means, this does not mean 3 times 3. It does not mean 3 times 3. It means multiply this number this many times. So what 3 to the third means is take 3 3 to the third means take this number and multiply it by itself this many times, this many times. So that's 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So we have 4 plus 27 divided by 9, I'm bringing on the 9, times 8 to the second. Notice how I'm still going left to right. So now, now, uh, I'm still not done with the exponents because I still have another exponent here. So we have 4 plus 27 divided by 9 times 8 to the second. 8 to the second, 8 to the second means take this number and multiply it to itself 
this many times. So that's 8 times 8, or 64. 64, all right? So now what we're going to do is we've just finished the step dealing with the exponents. We've just finished that step, and what we're going to do is now we're either going to multiply or divide. We're going to either multiply or divide. How do you decide which one to do first? Well, the order, it's not the order of the acronym. It's the order of operations, which says you'd go left to right. You go left to right. When dealing with multiplication or division, you go left to right. So as you look at this problem, looking at the problem from the left side to the right side, division is to the left of multiplication. So that is what you're going to attack first. The 27 divided by 9. You are not going to multiply the 9 and the 64 because we, we look at the problem in, according to the order of operations, not the order of the, the way that the acronym is listed. So we get 4 plus 27 divided by 9 is 3 times... 64 times 64, all right? We're still on this step of multiplication and division. We now multiply. You get 64 times 3. The way you multiply 64 times 3, you get 12. Uh, you get 19, so you get 4 plus 192. 4 plus 192 and 4 plus 192 is 196. 196. All right. And that is, uh, that's all we're going to have time for as far as our order of operations problems. All right. So the last thing that we're going to do, and we don't even have time really to do this, uh, but we're in, in, at Providence St. Mel which is a great institution, by the way. Uh, Providence St. Mel is a school on the west side of Chicago where we're really, really demanding students to perform at the highest level. The students are attending some of the greatest colleges in the world. Um, most of the students, uh, many of the students are getting significant scholarships to offset some of the costs, the, the humongous costs that are incurred. Um, the, with, with college nowadays. College is very, very expensive. So not only do we want to send the students to college, not only do we want the students to be successful in college, but we want them not to incur all of the debt that unfortunately um, comes with uh, getting a college degree nowadays. So um, that's the school where I work and um, for, okay, well, whatever that's worth. Uh, last thing that we have time, last thing that I think we have time for is uh, we're introducing uh, spreadsheets to the, not spreadsheets, I'm sorry. Uh, we're introducing uh, circuits to the students. Uh, and we'll have to talk about this. We'll try to talk about this next time uh, when we have more time. Okay, we're trying to zoom in, and uh, I think that's the best I'm going to be able to do as far as zooming in. But we are trying to teach the students, uh, we're trying to teach the students electrical circuitry. So many of my students, they are, they are actually uh learning about some basic electronics. They're learning about basic electronics uh, by coming after school and we're doing circuitry work and they are um, testing what we call truth tables. And in the process, they're learning about electronics. And this might be something that they want to do for a career. You never know. But uh, we're, we've got to wrap up the show because we don't have a lot of a time now, but we want you to watch every uh, Thursday from 5.30 to 6 o'clock. We're encouraging students to perform their best in school, put forth their best effort, and dominate not just math, but English, Spanish, science, all of the subjects uh, to do well so that they can uh, go to the best college and so forth. God bless you. Thank you for watching. 
And remember, all students can and will dominate math. Have a good evening.